How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and this is the CSGO Ultimate FPS Increase Guide for 2023. It's sad to see CSGO coming to an end but with CS2 right around the corner, for those of you like myself and the millions of daily players CSGO is still getting, whether you're getting into Counter-Strike for the first time or if you've been playing it for years like myself and you're still giving it a go, I thought it's time to do an updated FPS Increase Guide showing you absolutely everything you need to know to get the best performance in 2023 on CSGO. This video is heavily updated compared to some of my older CSGO guides. We've stripped back to some of the unnecessary steps alongside added in a ton of extra features and optimizations you can apply quickly and easily to any system to get the absolute lowest latency possible and the best FPS. Throughout this video we're going to aim to keep this as information dense as possible to ensure that you can just quickly and easily apply these settings to your system to decide whether or not you want to keep them, change them back or just try them out. To start off with this we're going to tackle some extremely basic Windows optimizations but they are still important nonetheless. First of all start by navigating to the bottom left, typing game space mode, heading to game mode settings and ensure that Windows game mode has been switched to the on position. To follow up with this, we need to navigate to the bottom left once again, this time typing in GPU space settings. Clicking on the graphics settings panel, navigate down to Steam, click on the game, navigate down to properties, and over to local files. Go to the local files browse section, take yourself towards the top to the directory bar, double click. Take yourself all the way from the right hand side to the left by clicking and dragging, right clicking and selecting copy. Minimize out of the game folder, head back to the settings icon, this time go to the browse section, go to the directory bar at the top, remove everything with inside of the directory bar, right click select paste and press enter. Select the csgo.exe once again, select add. Scroll down until you find csgo.exe, select this option, select options, then select the option for high performance. This will ensure that csgo is always using the dedicated or fastest GPU available on your system. Navigate down, select save and exit out. For those of you on Chromium based web browsers or Microsoft Edge, take yourself to the top right hand side of your browser, go to the three lines or the three dots, then take yourself down to the settings cog. You'll need to go down to system and performance. For those of you on a Chromium based browser this may be listed under system or advanced settings. The option we're going to be looking for is continue running background extensions and apps when your web browser is closed. Ensure that this has been switched off. This will mean that whenever you actually close out of the web browser, the web browser and all extensions are actually closed and not running in the background. We then need to ensure that our system isn't booting and running tons of excess background applications automatically with our system boot. Take yourself to the bottom, right click on the taskbar, open task manager. Alternatively you can press Control, shift and escape on your keyboard to open this as well. On the left hand side, select Startup Apps. For Windows 10 users, this will be found at the top. Once inside of this section, navigate to the Status, select this until all of the enabled options are appearing at the top. You need to disable as many of these as possible. The only exception to this is if you don't know what a certain application is or if it looks important, leave that alone. Just simply find what you want to disable, right click on it, and either select Enable or Disable. This now swiftly moves us over to Steam optimizations. Head over to the top left hand side to Steam, then navigate down to Settings. Start with inside of the Library tab. Start by enabling Low Bandwidth Mode, low performance mode and show game icons in the left column. Take yourself over to the interface tab. I like to disable the option for enable GPU accelerated rendering in web. I would then recommend navigating over to the broadcasting tab. Go to the drop down menu under privacy setting and disable this. Same goes for remote play. Navigate to the top and unselect the option to use remote play to disable this. With that completed, take yourself to the bottom, select OK. Last but not least, we then have power plans. These are very simple, basic and easy to adjust and you could see a decent performance uplift from adjusting this on your system. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side, click the windows button, type power space plan select edit power plan, go to the navigation bar at the top, select power options, then select show additional power plans. For those of you on a desktop PC, I would highly recommend making use of the high performance power plan. For those of you on laptops, you'll more than likely find the best results to be balanced, as these will require a more balanced thermal profile, otherwise go with high performance for any desktop user. All you need to do to set it back to the balanced power plan is just go back inside of these options, select balanced, and it's then running the balanced power plan. But I'm going to be going with high performance. Once you've changed that over, exit out. This now swiftly moves us over to game optimizations. Before we do anything, we're quickly going to boot into the game because we want to take note of a few options which we're currently using. The options we need to quickly make a backup of can be found on the left hand side by going to the settings menu, going over to the keyboard and mouse section. Quickly take a picture, screenshot or quickly write down your mouse sensitivity, your zoom sensitivity and any custom keybinds you may have set. Once all of those have been backed up, go ahead and exit out of the game. The main thing we need to do now is actually delete all of our old game config files. Deleting these can fix so many issues 
issues when it comes to CSGO performance. If you've used multiple accounts to play CSGO, you might be wondering why some accounts feel smoother, snappier, and more responsive than others. So you might have different iterations of configs with tons of outdated config files, auto execs, which are often conflicting with each other, and it's just really bad for performance. Don't panic though, I'm gonna be showing you a really quick and easy method in which you can utilize to fully customize the config, put in all of those custom settings that you actually want to utilize in an optimized fashion. Please do at least give this a try, see how your game performs after doing this, and if you want to revert it back, you can do so at any time. Minimize out of Steam, take yourself down to the File Explorer button at the bottom. Head over to this PC on the left-hand side, go to Local Disk C Drive, scroll down to Program Files x86, scroll down once again to Steam, find the User Data folder. Inside of here, you may find one folder or you might find multiple. These folders inside of the User Data folder are for each individual account you've signed into on this PC. So unfortunately, for those of you that have multiple accounts with inside of here, to ensure that we apply this to your main account, we are going to need to repeat this for all accounts with inside of here. I only have one, thankfully, so I'm going to go inside of the folder, where you'll then be met with a folder titled 730. This is all of the game settings and config files for your current game. If you want to make a quick backup of this, right click, select copy, and just paste this on the desktop or somewhere safe. Once that's done, find the 730 folder, right click, and delete this folder. For those of you that have multiple accounts, navigate back up to the navigation bar at the top, select user data, go into your next folder, find the 730 folder, and delete it. Repeat that step until it's done for all accounts. We're now going to tackle the launch options. Right click on CSGO with inside of Steam, navigate to properties. A very handy optimization which can fix performance issues on many PCs is to navigate over to local files. It's highly recommended to keep CSGO installed on your local disk C drive, as in some older source titles this can be a small bug, where you have the game installed to other drives on the system, this could potentially lead to performance issues. But if you want to cross off absolutely everything possible, navigate down to move install folder, select your local disk C drive, and select move. Next up is to navigate over to the general section. You can choose to keep the cloud saves option enabled if you wish to do so, as this will try its best to sync your settings across all PCs. I have this disabled though. Navigate down to the advanced launch options section, remove any and all launch options you're currently using, navigate inside the description down below, go all the way from the right hand side to the left, copy the launch option, right click on this empty box, and then select paste. If like myself you've been playing CSGO practically since this come out, you could have tons of workshop content, bloating CSGO, increasing the installation size of the game. For this navigate to the community tab in Steam, navigate down to workshop. Click search workshop, type counter, select Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Navigate down to the browse section, then go to subscribed items. This will then list any and all workshop content which is installed to your game which you are subscribed to. If there are any particular maps you want to keep backed up with inside of here, by all means keep a backup of them or just take a screenshot so you can resubscribe to them afterwards. Head over to the right hand side to unsubscribe from all and that will automatically remove that content from your game. I would then recommend clicking the back button to go back to the Global Offensive workshop and we're going to install just one last map which will help us customize our config later on. For this we're going to be typing in config generator. I'm then going to look for the crashes config generator. We want to double check that it's actually the authentic map by going down to the created by section. We should then find it's created by crashes and Mysterio. Alternatively, you can find this linked in the description down below. Navigate down and subscribe to this. With that completed and out of the way, we can finally boot into the game by going over to CSGO and hitting play. First of all, take yourself over to the left hand side to the settings menu. Inside of here, go down to enable developer console and turning this to on. For those of you on wired, decent internet connections, I would highly recommend changing your max acceptable traffic bandwidth down to unrestricted. If you're on a weaker connection or a limited data plan, keep this at the standard 1.5 Mbps. Then head over to mouse and keyboard. Input the settings in which you backed up earlier for your mouse sensitivity, zoom sensitivity, and any custom keybinds in which you backed up earlier. Make sure that you also enable raw input and disable mouse acceleration for the best mouse inputs possible. What we then need to do is head over to the video tab. Start with display mode, switch this over to full screen as this is the only mode in which you should be using. Everything else introduces more input latency and worse FPS. For your resolution, you want to set this to your monitor's native resolution for the best results, especially for those of you that tab in and out quite often. Head down to advanced video. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll be finding the best in-game settings for the absolute best FPS possible. And on the right hand side of the screen, you'll be seeing the best competitive settings. These settings are optimized to give you the best competitive advantage possible. These settings will optimize your vision through smokes, competitive advantages with shadows inside of maps. Whichever you want to go with, simply pause the video, copy the settings, and you're then good to go. We then lastly need to navigate over to the audio section. For me personally, I would actually recommend disabling the 3D audio processing and trying that out. I much prefer having a stereo setup without the 3D audio processing. With all of that dialed in, what we now need to do is head over to Play CSGO in the top left, go to the drop down menu, set this to workshop maps, and boot into the config generator in which you installed earlier on. Select your character. To set anything with inside of it, all you need to do is walk up to the option, shoot it. It's just that simple. You can navigate over, dial in your crosshair settings, try out the different crosshair types. You can dial in the crosshair completely with inside of here, utilizing the minimum 
and maximum options. You can change your gun view model. One option I really like is to set the gun movement to the minimal setting to make sure the gun basically doesn't move on your screen when you're using this. So many people like this option once they change it. You might not though. So if you want to set it back to the default, set it back to default. If you want to go back to the recommended or default settings, just navigate over to recommended, then hit default for absolutely everything with inside of here. You can also navigate over to the config section where you can find legends, pros, community, and configs with inside of here. You can head into the pro section, select one of your favorite teams, then just simply click on the pro in which you want to copy their config for. This will give you their radar settings, HUD settings, crosshair, view model. It's just super simple, quick, and easy to click on any of these and try them out. For me though, I like to go with practically all of the recommended settings. One thing I would highly recommend that you do is navigate over to the bind section and set a bind for clear decals. Got a select key where you can set any key bind with inside of here. I like to have clear decals set to left alt. You can't set the bind on any of the keys which are marked in red, but click on any key you would like to set this to. I'm going to be going with left alt, so I've shot that, then go down to confirm. If I then go over to these bots with inside of here, shoot them a few times, you'll notice that there is a ton of mess on the floor. All I need to do to clear these decals is press left alt, whatever your bind is, and it's completely clear. Tons of pros use this. If you're not using this key bind, you really are missing out. You can use this in matchmaking games. It's completely safe and normal. So many people use this, and I use this multiple times every round just to clear up all of that visual clutter that happens. If you would like to save your config to come back to this later or try out other configs, go back to the main section, navigate to the bottom left to save slash load, go to one of the profiles to save to, and just simply click the profile. Here are a few last commands on screen which you can input to the in-game console to potentially increase FPS or increase competitive advantage. To open up the in-game console, you'll find this under the escape key and above tab on your keyboard. It's called the tilde key. Once you press that, the in-game console will open up, where you can then copy and paste these commands which can be found in the description down below or on screen now. Many of these commands will increase FPS by a ton, but can put you at a slight competitive disadvantage in exchange for that FPS. So go with the recommended settings which are on screen now, just simply input the commands or type them manually. For instance, I'm going to be changing R underscore dynamic to 1, then press enter. Once that command's been input, you're then good to go. To change the FPS cap with inside of the game or set an FPS cap, simply press the tilde key to open up the console, type in the config of FPS underscore max space, and then input the value. The number one thing you want to stay away from on super high-end systems that can achieve it is staying away from hitting 1000 FPS. For those of you that can achieve very high FPS, I would set an FPS cap of 960. You can go with 999, but it's just not worth going that close. If you would like to take some strain off your system, give up a slight bit of input latency in exchange for consistency, an FPS cap of 400 is absolutely fantastic for most systems. If you'd like to go one step further than this, go with an FPS cap of 800. Once you're done with inside of this map, simply go ahead, exit out down to the bottom left, select yes, and your config is then set up and good to go. For a bonus game setting you might want to make use of, especially for those of you on 1440p or 4K monitors, you could look into introducing integer scaling to allow you to run lower end resolutions and have them look incredibly sharp and clear, rather than having just a random resolution stretched out looking like a blurry, mushy mess. An integer scaled resolution will be a resolution which can be completely evenly multiplied on your monitor to ensure that you have that very crisp looking display. If you're someone like myself that likes to have high end resolution monitors, but in games like CSGO you want the absolute best FPS possible and lowest latency regardless of anything, you just want your game to be clear and sharp, this is a fantastic option to at least try out. To enable this on Radeon GPUs, head over to your gaming tab, head over to global display. Navigate down to GPU scaling, enable this, set the scaling mode to full panel, then enable integer scaling. For Nvidia users, simply navigate inside of the Nvidia control panel, head over to adjust desktop size and position, select the monitor you want to enable integer scaling for, then enable the integer scaling option. Boot back inside of your game. For those of you on 4K displays, you can utilize 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 resolutions. They'll be integer scaled properly on your panel and should leave you with a very crisp and clear looking image. And the game feels so responsive with this. This isn't going to be a setting for everyone, but for those of you out there that are quite niche like myself, this is a phenomenal option to at least try out. That finally leads us onto the advanced optimization section of this video. On screen now, you can see a ton of information of all of the things in which you can look into, which are worthwhile for getting the best FPS possible, not just in CSGO, but other hyper competitive high FPS titles such as Valorant, League of Legends, Dota, and even CS2 when it comes out. You don't have to follow along with everything inside of this screen, but each and every setting which is listed on screen now is beneficial in its own way and will definitely improve your gameplay experience on games such as CSGO. Another option for Windows 11 users that you might want to look into is disabling core isolation, but this can potentially make the system slightly more vulnerable, so proceed with this setting at your own risk. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side, type in core isolation. Find the option for memory integrity with inside of here and disable.
disable this. Once it's been disabled, restart the system, Core Isolation will no longer be running. If you want to enable it for any reason in the future, all you need to do is type Core Isolation, go back to the option for memory integrity, and turn this back on. This now leads us over to GPU optimizations. Before we jump into the Radeon control panel or the Nvidia control panel settings, I would highly recommend one, updating your GPU drivers, and two, doing a clean driver installation. Utilizing DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller can remove all excess bloated and old GPU drivers from the system. Doing that alone can fix so many people's performance issues, stuttering, and game crashes, it's absolutely incredible. When it comes to installing your latest GPU driver, I would highly recommend looking into customizing or de-bloating the driver before you install it. To remove all of the excess features you don't want, removing old unnecessary functionality so it's incredibly lightweight, giving me the best performance possible with inside of my games, the lowest level of input latency, and keeping my system as minimal as possible. If that is something that interests you, consider checking out the video on the card on the top right hand side of the screen, alongside the recommended videos in the description down below. But those of you on AMD Radeon GPUs, with inside of the software panel, head up to the gaming tab, then navigate down to CSGO with inside of here, as we only want to change the settings for CSGO itself and not system wide. I'd recommend having nearly all options on the left hand side set to disabled, navigate down to wait for vertical sync, and switch this to forced off. The only option you might want to enable with inside of here is actually Radeon image sharpening, as this can help the visuals of your game and make everything look slightly more crisp and clear, and I set this to about 20%. If the game's too sharp, lower this. If it's not sharp enough, increase it. Once again on the right hand side, if you want to enable integer scaling just for an individual game with inside of AMD Radeon GPUs, you can do that here. Otherwise, leave it to global setting. Enable the custom color option, then navigate down towards the bottom to saturation. In most cases, this is the only slider I would actually change with inside of here, and I would set this to a maximum of 125%, its complete personal preference. Once that's then dialed in for your system, go ahead and minimize out. Inside of the NVIDIA control panel, start by going to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Navigate down to the middle option, select this, go to the bottom right, select apply. Then navigate over to the left hand side to manage 3D settings. Now we aren't going to be changing any of the global or system wide settings, we only want to adjust the settings for CSGO itself. To do this, navigate over to program settings, go to the drop down menu, select counter strike with inside of here. On some systems, low latency mode off can maximize render throughput if you're getting seriously high FPS and could potentially be beneficial. Otherwise for most people, set this to on. If you do not have the option for on, you only have off and ultra, I would just ignore using the ultra setting and go with off as you'll be really minimizing the render throughput when using ultra and it's just not worth it on a game where you're able to achieve such high FPS. Preferred refresh rate, set this to highest available. Power management mode is a great option to set on a per game basis. These days, I do highly recommend utilizing the normal power plan on a system wide basis, but for individual games such as CSGO, setting this to prefer maximum performance, the moment you close out of the game, it's going to default back to the system setting, which is typically normal. Next up, scroll all the way towards the bottom to find vertical sync and switch this to off. You could also go up to texture filtering quality and set this to high performance for a very small FPS boost. Some people don't like doing this though, it's mainly personal preference. Once completed, go to the bottom right, select apply. If you'd also like to bump the vibrancy of the colors with inside of your game, navigate over to the adjust desktop color settings section, select the monitor you're going to be adjusting the saturation for, scroll down to digital vibrance. I like to have this set to about 65%. This is personal preference and won't do much for color accuracy, but it can help you dial in your game settings for your personal preference. Due to the nature of CSGO being a hyper competitive high FPS title, I would highly recommend against utilizing any FreeSync or G-Sync technologies with inside of this game. The only time I would potentially even begin to think about using this is if you are on a 360 hertz monitor or higher. You'd be giving up so much extra FPS which is available with inside of the game to enable FreeSync or G-Sync properly and it's just not worth it. So for those reasons, I would actually recommend disabling that technology when playing games such as CSGO, CS2, or other very high FPS competitive titles. The application I actually make use of these days with inside of CSGO is actually ISLC. Google search ISLC, never get down to wagnardsoft.com, this to download to your desktop, select save, go ahead to the three dots, select desktop, OK, extract. Once completed, you'll then be met with the ISLC folder. Open up the application. To set this up for your system, set the first box on the left hand side to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your system RAM. For me, I have 16,000 megabytes at the top, which is 16 gig, so just simply half the number at the top for you. On the right hand side, select enable custom time resolution, go to wanted time resolution, remove this value, type 0 0.50, then use the delete key to remove all extra values. Set the ISLC poly rate to 1000, selecting purge standby list and going to the bottom to start, ISLC, or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner, will automatically clean out the system's standby list to ensure that it doesn't run out of memory whenever it starts getting close to the number you set in the bottom left hand side. The wanted time resolution setting potentially helping latency on your system and potentially increasing overall FPS. Whenever I play CSGO or any hyper competitive game, I like to leave this running in the background, minimized just like that. For those of you looking to deep dive into Nvidia settings, there is one guide in which I would highly recommend that you follow along with that has come to the channel recently, which is my advanced Nvidia optimization guide. This will show you some really neat third party tools which 
which you can utilize to jump into the back end of the driver to unlock all functionality and adjust practically every setting in the back end, almost like an advanced NVIDIA control panel. And there you guys have it. Let me know of your results in that comment section down below and what sort of system type you're on. Make sure that you are subscribed with the bell notification turned on. And in the meantime, if you're looking for more FPS optimizations or to get the most out of your system without having to spend a penny, consider checking out one of the two videos on screen now and I'll see you over there.